Up first tonight, the dicey mix of God and politics. Former Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney has been marching methodically through his safe and steady strategy, hoping to win the Republican presidential nomination. But just as it appeared he was weathering a major challenge from the Texas Governor Rick Perry, the Mormon question. Thrust front and center by a Southern Baptist minister who backs Perry and calls Mormons members of a cult. You know, part of a pastor's job is to warn his people and others about false religions. Back in 2007, he was then seeking the 2008 Republican presidential nomination. Romney addressed questions about his faith in a speech at the George H.W. Bush Presidential Library. Let me assure you that no authorities of my church, or of any other church for that matter, will ever exert influence on presidential decisions. Their authority is theirs within the province of church affairs, and it ends with the affairs of the nation begin. Now, top Romney aides see no upside, they tell me, to their candidate joining this revived debate. In their view, a small slice of evangelicals have problems voting for a Mormon, and there is little or nothing they think Romney can do to win them over. But a second Mormon in the Republican field, the former Utah Governor John Huntsman, today told CNN that Governor Perry should repudiate the Texas pastor who said a vote for Romney would lend credibility to a cult. Make an immediate and decisive break, period. Uh, this kind of talk, uh, I think, has no home uh, in American politics these days. And, you know, anyone who is associated with somebody willing to make those comments ought to stand up and distance themselves in very bold language. Uh, and that hasn't been done. And, uh, and Rick ought to stand up and do that. So who gets hurt more by this dust-up, Governor Romney or Governor Perry? Joining us from Atlanta, Ralph Reed, he's the chairman of the Faith and Freedom Coalition. Also with us, the Democratic mayor of Salt Lake City, Ralph Becker. Ralph Reed, to you first. Uh, as someone who's very familiar with evangelical voters, what do they say specifically when you're at an evangelical, maybe it's in Iowa, an evangelical church, or in South Carolina, two critical states coming up on the Republican calendar? What is the objection evangelical voters have to Mormons? Well, you know, John, I don't think it's a newsflash that there are deep and abiding theological differences between evangelical Christians and the Mormon Church. I, that really goes back to the 19th century. It's deep, it's historical. And by the way, it's not confined to evangelicals. It would be true of any orthodox uh, Christian denomination. But I think evangelicals are sophisticated enough and subtle enough to understand that they're not electing a bishop, they're not choosing a pastor, they're not electing a pope or a rabbi. Uh, they're choosing the CEO of the nation. And when you go out, John, and you survey these voters and you ask them what the number one issue facing the country is, they don't say Mormonism, uh, they don't say religion, they say jobs and the economy. So my advice to Mitt Romney, which admittedly is unsolicited and, and it's free, so take it for what it's worth, is don't be defensive about this. He can lean into it. Uh, he can make it very clear that while there are theological differences, he shares their values, he shares their stands on the issues, and what the country's doing, John, is they're hiring a new leader to run the government and to be CEO of the nation and to turn this economy around and create jobs. They want to know that Romney's pro-life, pro-family, and pro-marriage, but they're not insisting that he share their theology. And yet, Mr. Mayor, at a time Governor Perry has been slipping a bit in the polls, and he's been struggling a bit, and Governor Romney has been solidifying his support, trying to raise more money and to keep his front-runner status, this pastor, first gives a speech implicitly saying Romney's not good enough, he's not a Christian, and then walks in and tells reporters Mormonism is a cult, and a vote for a Mormon is a vote to lend credibility to a cult. I assume you don't see an accident here. No. I, um, I, first of all, I, I really can't comment on what someone may have said elsewhere, but in my experience here in Salt Lake City, uh, I'm not a Mormon. Uh, I certainly live among a lot of Mormons, and it's like any other community I've lived in. Uh, there are great people here. Uh, it's a warm place to live, hospitable place to live. And people are folks like everywhere, except here. I think we tend to look out for each other a little more. And so, Mr. Mayor, in a place out west where Mormons are not as uh, unique, shall we say. If you look at a map and the demographics, and we're going to do that later in the show, there are more moments in the West. When you hear a Southern Baptist preacher say it's a cult, and they're not Christians, and a vote for a Mormon is a vote to back a cult, what goes through your mind? Well, it just doesn't make any sense to me. That certainly isn't my experience, uh, both in working among Mormons in business, working in the political realm, uh, serving as mayor of a community that has Mormons and non-Mormons. 
uh, our goal is to work together and make a great American city. And the divisions, certainly people know differences uh, among their faiths, but in, when it comes to our community and things that we want in our community, there's not a difference between Mormons and non-Mormons. And, and Ralph, you mentioned that you think this is the governor should just ride it out. Uh, governor Romney should uh, not lean into it, is the way you say, lean into it. If you look at the polling data, there's some evidence to support that. The Washington Post ABC poll, are you less likely to support a candidate who's Mormon? These are Republican primary voters. Back in 2006, 36 percent, so nearly 4 in 10, say they were less likely. Now that number is down to 20 percent. To what do you attribute that, Ralph Reed? Is that because Governor Romney ran before, Harry Reid, the Democratic majority leader of the Senate, is a Mormon? Or are people of all faiths getting more familiar with Mormons in politics? I, I really think it's a couple of things, John. Number one, I think the novelty is largely worn off. And I think every time you have a pioneer or a path blazer, whether it's uh, Alfred E. Smith as a Roman Catholic in 1928, and then later Kennedy in 60, or whether it was Joe Lieberman being the first uh, Jewish American to be on a ticket, you know, there's appropriately a lot of discussion. Uh, there, there's a real novelty to it. And I think in a good way, by the way, welcoming people to the process. and. And, and breaking down old barriers of exclusion. But I think this time, you know, Romney's been around the track before, he's run before, he's checked all the boxes, and to his credit, he's appeared at all these prominent social conservative gatherings, including one that the Faith and Freedom Coalition did in Orlando in conjunction with Presidency Five. And the other reason, I think, m not greatly noted, but significant, is that as the marriage debate has proceeded around the country, particularly in California uh, in 2008, uh, it was cooperation uh, between Mormons and evangelicals on their belief that marriage should be defined as a man and a woman that helped win 31 out of 31 state referenda on marriage. The California marriage uh, amendment would not have passed uh, without the Mormon church. You, you, you mentioned that cooperation, and you also mentioned the forum you held down in Florida. Every time you organize a right. forum like this, the organizers of a forum or of an event are responsible for who they invite. They know who they invite. And I was talking to Tony Perkins about this on Friday. He's the Family Research Council president who's part of this Value Voters Conference. There's no secret that Pastor Jeffress has said those things about Mormons in the past. So when you ask him to introduce Rick Perry, you know what you might get. Another gentleman invited to speak at that forum is Brian Fisher from the American Family Association. And Governor Romney, even before Mr. Fisher spoke, criticized him. But let's listen first to Mr. Fisher. Every advance of the homosexual agenda comes at the expense of religious liberty. The greatest long-range threat to our security and liberty is not radical Islam, but Islam itself. Not a single one of our unalienable rights will be safe in the hands of a president who believes that we evolved from slime and we are the descendants of apes and baboons. Now, Governor Romney spoke just before that, and he seemed to know what was coming. Listen here. We should remember that decency and civility are values, too. One of the speakers who will follow me today has crossed that line, I think. Poisonous language doesn't advance our cause. It's never softened a single heart nor changed a single mind. Ralph, just to you first, Ralph Reed, does Governor Romney have a point? I think he has a point. I think that uh, he was echoing what uh, John F. Kennedy said when he addressed the Houston Ministerial Association in September of 1960, when he said the issue in this campaign should not be what kind of church I believe in, for that should matter only to me. It should be what kind of America I believe in. I really believe, John, that that's the kind of campaign Mitt Romney's running. And by the way, I believe that's the kind of campaign that Rick Perry's running, I might add. I think these candidates are all going to be judged on the merits not only by evangelical voters, but by all voters. And I'm very comfortable that this election, both in the Republican primary and in the general election in November of 2012, will be decided on the issues of jobs and the economy and who can best strengthen our families and restore values and who is uniquely qualified to lead America into the 21st century. I don't think that these debates are insignificant. But I don't believe for a moment that somebody's going to be excluded from the White House because they're a member of a particular church any more than I thought Barack Obama would be excluded because he was an African-American. Mayor Becker, I want to close with you. And my friend Ralph Reed's a pretty good politician. I was asking him about the language of Brian Fisher from the American Family Association and whether Governor Romney was right uh, to say that uh, 
poisonous language does not advance our cause. You heard Mr. Fisher talk about the homosexual agenda. You heard him talk about Islam, all of Islam. You heard him talk about those who believe in evolution. Uh, what did you think of that? Well, it lacks the basic civility that I think is what creates a good civic dialogue. And in our community, uh, we have taken on discrimination. Uh, we have passed a non-discrimination ordinance that eliminates discrimination against the LGBT community in housing and employment. The first portion of our community that spoke up in favor of it at our city council meeting was the LDS Church. And we have a long ways to go to bring people together. We find that, I can tell you, as mayors in this country, where our job is to take care of the basic needs of people, that the kind of bickering and, and disservice that is done by our elected officials sometimes in Washington, D.C., and by others, to create the divisiveness and not address the real issues in a sensible way is really counterproductive to what we need in this economy. We have benefited through the Recovery Act. Our streets are better. We have teachers in our classrooms. Our public safety officials are able to do their job, and we're able to advance our goals as a community. And we need to do the same thing as a nation in terms of creating jobs and improving our economy. And to, to divert from that, I find really a bit uh, counterproductive to the real needs of our community and people across America. Mayor Becker, Ralph Reed, appreciate your time tonight, gentlemen. We'll stay in touch as the campaign unfolds. And